we will go in order of the first place. So, Emmy, would you like to come up and give your presentation titled okay. Redesign of Northbound Oak Street between Central Avenue and MLK? <laughs> All right, good afternoon. My name is Emmy Foley, and for my project this semester, I studied Northbound Oak Street between Central and Martin Luther King, as it says before. And Oak Street is the frontage road, in case you were not sure which one Oak Street is. There we go. This is the current road right here. Right over here is Central, and down here is Martin Luther King. This is the exit lane from coming off of Westbound Central, and this is the two lanes of Oak Street here that it meets up with. This is the exit lane coming off Y25, and it merges in with Oak Street also, and then the split into three lanes right before Martin Luther King. I made sure to include a picture of this sign here that's on this road to pretty much epitomize how much attention has been paid to the stretch of road in the past few years. One, this is not an MUTCD approved message, and also these are, these are stick on letters that are on for tra the word traffic. And I don't know if this is painted with some kind of chalk paint or something, but it's coming off pretty bad there, and there's these stripes there holding the sign together, and I kind of doubt that it has any kind of reflectorization on it right now. <clears throat> I broke the road into three different sections, which we'll see in a second, and I counted traffic volumes at each, and they came up with my recommendations. First section I studied was where Westbound Oak Street comes in to, or where Westbound Central comes in and meets Oak Street. These three lanes come in and they merge into one right, almost right away. The second section is right in the middle here where Oak Street narrows down to just one lane and the exit lane comes in off of I-25 and they merge in together. And the third section is right up here where the Oak Street splits into the three lanes directed prior to Dr. Martin Luther King. I know it's pretty bad then. My data collection methods, I use tally counters to count the traffic volumes. Each section was counted for three days for two hours each day, and they were each counted for the same time of day. Each section was counted um, for the same time of day. And I used their measuring wheels to get the dimensions for the road to make my recommendations. This is the first section I chose here. On the left, you'll see the lane coming in from Westbound Central, and on the right is the two lanes of Oak Street. Currently, Westbound Central yields to Oak Street with a yield sign, just the control method there. Uh, I've seen some pretty crazy things here during peak time. Cars have actually driven on the sidewalk to get around other vehicles. And right here, where there's, there's this wide single lane here, cars will go four or five across trying to get around other cars because it gets really narrow at the end and <coughs> it's crazy. And it takes, it takes more than five minutes to get from Central right here to Martin Luther King. It's only 800 feet up the road. And so people just do crazy things to try to get ahead of the other drivers right here. This is the data. As you can see, the orange line is data, or cars coming from the one left on Central Lane compared to the yellow, which is the two lanes of Oak Street combined. And as you can see, uh, the traffic from Westbound Central consistently outnumbers traffic from Oak Street. So, and the, but they don't have the right of way, so it really causes a lot of problems. This is the second area right here. And this is the necking down of Oak Street right here. As you can see, it's pretty narrow. And this is the exit lane on the right coming off of I-25. Oak Street at this point is expected to stop for traffic getting off of I-25, but as we'll see in a minute, traffic from getting off of I-25 is pretty rare compared to how much traffic is on Oak Street, and so a lot of people become pretty complacent about the stop sign. Some will stop, some will kind of yield, they'll look and see if there's cars coming in, if there are, they'll stop. Some will just blow through it like there's nothing there, and especially when traffic gets busy, so the light from the king is up behind this picture. And whenever traffic's blocked up, it will be blocked up from the light back to central all the way. And so once the, <laughs> once the traffic signal turns green at Martin Luther King, cars that are behind the stop sign have a really short window of time to be able to get through the light before it changes. And so they just won't stop in order to just get through there and not have to worry about it anymore. And so it gets pretty crazy. Right there, you can see. 70, that's not, there we go. More than three quarters of traffic comes from Oak Street as compared to how
how much traffic takes off of I-25, as you can see here. So it's a really rare occurrence, and people really don't mer uh, yield to traffic exiting the interstate very much. This is the final section I studied here. This is a stop sign right here where it next down. And as you can see, all of the vehicles right now are piled into the center lane. So there's, there's the three lanes. The left lane is a turn only lane going left under Martin Luther King. The center lane continues straight. And the right lane either goes straight or you can turn right. And after the light, both of the straight lanes go straight on to I-25. There's no need to merge. Both of them turn straight on to there. But as you can see, no cars are in that right lane. And this line of traffic is blocked up for quite a ways behind the stop sign. <coughs> and so if cars did use both lanes equally, you could really almost double traffic through this area and really ease the problems here, but they really don't do that right now. And as you can see here, a little bit more than three quarters of the traffic chooses the left lane over the right lane pretty much all the time, so it's pretty bad. My proposed changes first is to change Oaks roadway alignment to provide two lanes all the way to Martin Luther King. I chose this picture here because as you can see, this is the side of the road. There's zero escaping, a sidewalk, more zero escaping, and another sidewalk. So there's plenty of room to just add a little bit more road width to have two lanes. And actually the road is currently almost wide enough to provide two lanes. You can see this car here, there's a bunch of space next to them already. So there's really, there's only need for a couple feet really of extension to make it two usable lanes and it would really ease the problem. The second is to remove this stop sign here and change the right of way, so the Oak has the right of way over the exit lane, which as we saw before is really the minority of traffic, so you put a yield sign up there on the exit ramp to allow traffic from Oak Street to have the priority. And finally, there's no sign right now on Martin Luther King indicating, I'm not Martin Luther King, on Oak, indicating lane usage when the road splits into three, so no one really knows, maybe. Now, I think that's probably part of the problem is no one is aware that both of the lanes go straight, or especially unfamiliar drivers. And so if we have the sign there, that itself could really ease the problem because people would know that both lanes go straight. Finally, here's the uh, <coughs> design currently. As you can see, this really narrows down right here. We've got nice 12 foot lanes down here, and they're really next nice down here where they're coming together. This is my proposed solution. Oak Street would narrow down into just one lane right before Westbound Central comes in. And then the west side and central lane would actually form its own lane next to the single lane formed by Oak Street. And they would go straight through there and they would have the right of way. And then the signs, I think that's the R, or I mean W4-2 sign, and the W4-3 sign to let people know what's going on. Remove the yield sign, remove the stop sign, and then add a yield sign on the exit ramp right there to let people know what's going on. And also the R3-8. Finally, this road really causes a considerable amount of congestion. After this point on this road, you cannot access I-25 again until you get to Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, Comanche, which is three miles up the road. And so people really don't have a lot of choice if they're down, if you're downtown, if you're at the university, anywhere along Central, anywhere in that area, you don't have any other option if you want to get on I-25 but to use this. And it's really inadequately designed for the amount of traffic that it experiences. I don't think it's been touched since the interstate system was actually put in. And since then, traffic volumes have significantly increased, and it really needs to be changed. Uh, just a few simple changes could almost double traffic flow through the area. Even if the money wasn't available to widen the road, just removing the stop sign, changing the right of way there where the stop sign <coughs> currently is located, and adding the R3-8 sign could significantly improve traffic at that in itself, where the, you know, the best option would be to widen the road. Sign change could also make a big improvement. Thank you very much for your time. Is there any questions? Uh, 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 get everyone together here. For the record, Thanks everyone and uh, write some prettier dynamics I study from her homework because she puts in all the steps and I would